Hey Transformers fans, welcome back. Here I am with episode number four of my series of the basics of Transformers customizing. And uh, this particular video um, comes at you via an idea um, from a Twitter friend uh, that uh, really kind of said, you know, it would be great if you put together a video that actually showed how you paint um, and the approach that you use when you're actually um, you know, applying the paint to the figures. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this one. I'm going to do an actual, you know, live painting um, session on one of my figures. And for this particular one, I've chosen to repaint um, not the whole figure, but portions of the Last Night Berserker. Um, and the reason that I've chosen him is because I really never really liked the way his torso looked with the you know, just the plain gray and then the X across it. I didn't really like that very much. Um, but when Studio Series came out with Crowbar here, I really dug the style of his torso. I thought it looked really, really cool in terms of the coloring and, and how they uh, how they applied the paint there. So I'm kind of going to use that for inspiration to repaint this guy's body, um, as well as I'm going to get rid of these orange fingers. I'm not a big fan of the orange fingers on him, so those are the two things that I'm going to focus on in this video. Um, but before I get to that, I kind of wanted to just give a quick um, uh, overview of, um, you know, what... I usually do before I start painting a figure. So the first thing I do is I usually spend some time looking at references, right? So I look at screenshots of the of the characters from the, either the cartoons or the movie. Um, you know, I'll look at uh, like box art from their packaging because that usually is a pretty good reference for perhaps any missing paint apps that they might have. Um, as well as I look at other customizations, you know, I'll just go to Google or, or one of the forums or whatever and I'll do a search for you know, Berserker last night um, customizations and I'll see what other people have done and I'll kind of look at what I like and what I don't like and I'll take the best ideas from there. Um, you know, kind of a good example of, um, you know, for example, using a reference um, is, uh, I haven't done anything to this figure yet, but obviously this is Studio Series 32 Optimus Prime, um, the uh, sort of the, the movie one version. Um, but if I was to start repainting this guy, the box art would be a really good place to start because here's the box that you can see that came with that Optimus Prime. And if you turn it to the side here, you can see a really nice detailed version of Optimus um, and get a lot of hints for what you might want to do to customize that figure. And I'll give you one example in particular. So you can see on his knee joints here, you know, he's got this bronzy, goldy color on them, which obviously this figure does not have. So that's like a minor detail that could make the figure look really, really nice. Um, another detail, obviously, is, um, you know, if you look at, you know, the, the chest, in the middle of the chest there, he's kind of got that same goldy color on those two little nubs or circles that are on his chest. Um, but again, the figure doesn't have that. They're just the... I can take that off because this piece is removable. Uh, but you can kind of see those are just plain silver. So that, again, would be another very simple little touch-up accent that you could do to this figure that would make it look more more movie accurate. So that's the kind of thing that I usually look for when I'm choosing a reference to, to kind of use as a guideline. Um, so just kind of use your imagination with what you find in terms of the, uh, the inspiration or the references that you use for your figures, but make sure that you're picking one that you think looks really, really good. Um, and then just do the best that you can with it. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm going to use um, Crowbar here as kind of my reference. So he's just going to stand off to the side while I do my painting. But the first step, obviously, in any customization, as I talked about in the previous video, which is episode number three, is the basics of disassembly. Um, disassembling the figure makes it a lot easier to paint. Um, and in this particular instance, I'm only going to focus on the disassembly pieces that don't require tools, right? So no screwdrivers, no taking pins out or anything like that, just ball joints, mushroom pegs, uh, and that kind of stuff. So um, one thing about this figure that was really kind of neat that I noticed is that these arm panels are just friction fit in there. So those just pop off very, very easily. So I'm going to take those off first, get them out of the way because I don't need to do any work to those. Next, the head pops off extremely easy though well, because it's just on a ball joint, as you can kind of see there. So the head going to come off to the side. I'm actually probably going to do some silver paint on the dreadlocks as well, just to kind of shine those up a little bit because they're a little drab right now, but head can go aside. Next thing, uh, the thighs or um, yeah, I guess the uh, the hip joint is a ball joint as well. So a simple kind of pull of the leg firmly, but in the direction that it comes off. You don't want to obviously get too crazy bending it, but that just pops the leg right off. And there you go. You've got a leg. Next one, pop the leg off just like that. 
arms, they pop off. Easy to, because they're also on ball joints. So pop the arm off. There we go. Pop the arm off. There we go. Now, the backpack of this guy is pinned, as you can see here. Pins, pins, pins. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of fold it out of the way as best I can. But that's going to have to stay on there as I paint, which is fine, because that actually will give me kind of like a handle to hold on to as I'm painting the body. So that works really, really well. So now I've got this um, kind of torso hovering there with very, very little stuff around it that is free game to paint. And I'm not going to have to worry about getting a lot of slop anywhere because I can just hold it by the backpack. And then when I'm putting it down to dry, I can just lay it on the backpack and nothing's going to happen to it. So this is actually a very good example of what you can do if you just do a little bit of disassembly. So now that he's in his various pieces, uh, I'm going to start choosing the paints that I'm going to use, or I've already selected them, but I'm going to go through them. So the base paint that I'm going to use is this paint here, which is an acrylic model paint from Tamiya, and it's the XF56, so it's a metallic gray paint, so it's got a metallic fleck to it, you can see, but it's a matte finish, so it's not, doesn't have a gloss finish on it, so it'll give a nice kind of brushed metal, or um, you know, bare metal look um, as I put it on. I've also got semi-gloss black here, which is good for doing uh, kind of the uh, the non, you don't really want it super shiny, but you also don't want it super flat sometimes. So that's where the semi-gloss black comes in. And this is again, a Tamiya acrylic X18. And then I've also got flat aluminum. So this is kind of like another version of the metallic gray, but as you can see, it's a much shinier aluminum color rather than a dull metallic or a, a, a gunmetal gray. And again, that's a flat color, so it's not going to have the shine to it. It's kind of a nice brushed metal look to it. And then I've got my basic red, and this is actually a gloss red, so it's going to be very vibrant, um, and for some accents, it's going to look really, really sharp. So again, these are all acrylic paints. I find them very easy to work with because they clean up with water. And then for my brushes that I'm going to use, I've got three different sizes that I'm going to use today. So I've got this very, very fine precision tip brush, which is good for some detail work. Oh, let's see, there we go. You kind of see it there. And then I've got this guy here, which is a little bit... Um, a little bit bigger, but I prefer round brushes. And I, as I mentioned in my first video, I like them when they're very, very soft. I find they're easier to work with. If you have a very rigid brush, I find that it gives you uh, much more visible paint lines in your work. So you're gonna wanna get a soft brush. And then for larger areas, um, I've got a bigger, again, very, very soft round tip brush. Um, and that's actually what I'm gonna start with because I've got a lot of torso to cover. Um, so that's where I'm gonna start. Now. In addition to all of those brushes and stuff, I also have a cup of water that I can use for cleaning my brush because you're gonna to wanna to clean your brush fairly regularly to make sure that it doesn't get all lumpy and clumpy. And then paper towels on the side for actually doing the wiping of the brush to make sure that it stays clean and dry. So I'm just gonna put those aside for now. I'll put them up there. Put these guys up here and let's crack it open. Always give your paints a really good shake. Now I've shaken these up before, so I'm not gonna do it, but Give them a good shake before you start painting so that it's all mixed up and you end up with the best possible results. Now for this particular paint job, I'm actually not going to um, worry about thinning the paint or uh, mixing the colors um, because it's pretty straightforward. I find that the metallic gray when you're doing areas like the torso actually works good if you just use it straight from the pot. Um, but if you're using, especially when it's like, there's lots of nooks and crannies, um, but if you're doing a large flat area, like if I was to do the, the panels um, and the big flat areas of the, of, the, um, of the robot, then I would probably thin the paint out a little bit. So I'm using thinner coats, uh, thinner coats, but it goes on smoother. Uh, but again, I'll talk about thinning and mixing paints in a little bit more of an advanced paint video, but right now this is just kind of the basics. So I've got my paint, I'm gonna get a good, good amount on the brush, but I don't want it dripping. So I'll give you, actually get that into the video. So obviously get a good amount of paint on the brush, but then make sure you scrape a little bit off into the jar so that the paint is, the brush itself is not dripping as you're painting. And here we go. So I generally will kind of hold the brush like that and then just kind of go in and make sure that I'm using the tip of the brush to get into the nooks and crannies. And then once I get into the nooks and crannies, then I'll kind of go on an angle for the smoother brush strokes. I find getting in there 
into the detail work is easier at the beginning and then you smooth out the surfaces after you've done that. I find you get a better finish. Okay, it's looking pretty good so far. A little bit more and you can see already that the metallic fleck in the paint really makes the sculpted detail pop much, much better than just the plain, bland old plastic that is used in these things. There we go, it's a better focus for you. So yeah, I mean, already you can see a difference. So what I'll do is I'll just go down the one side all the way. So you can kind of see like a side by side with you know the, the, the painted side versus the unpainted side and you can kind of tell me what you think, but I think it looks really, really good. Now you're gonna to want to avoid putting paint on the ball joints, um, like the actual balls of the ball joints, uh, because what it does is obviously it makes them sticky um, and it can make them fit a lot tighter than you'd want them to. There are other ways that if you need, like if it is a really loose ball joint, then you might want to tighten it up, but there are other methods of doing that. Um, some people use clear nail polish um, and let it harden and then they put it back together. Other people use like floor polish, which I've heard works really good. Um, but that's probably for a future video, I think, is the, the tightening up of the joints. Okay, so I'm just gonna go kind of like around the base of the hip section so that the visible parts near the ball joint are gonna be are gonna be painted. But for the most part, that is just about it, I think. I need to kind of go at the top here. And then around the base of the neck. Like that. Now, one thing I really like about this metallic gray paint is that it's very forgiving. Um, when it dries, it looks really, really good, even if you've kind of maybe not gotten as thick of a coat as you wanted to, or maybe it's too thick. As long as you let it dry, it ends up looking really, really good. And don't be afraid to go a little bit, um, get a little bit more paint on there if you notice that a place is looking kind of sparse and just give it another little touch up. Okay, so there we go. That is half the torso painted. And as you can see, that shine looks really cool on there. Much, much better than the, the bland plastic on the other side. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let that dry and like I said I'm going to touch up the dude's fingers because I really don't like that that orange plastic on there um, and what you'll see is this hand is on a pin so I can't just pop the hand off but what I'm also going to want to do is if it will hinge out if I just kind of pivot it like that then it gives me access to the back of the hand it makes it a little bit less likely that I'm going to slop the paint on anywhere else so it gives me a little bit more of a uh, an easier access to that. So I'm going to just basically use the same technique. I'm going to use the same brush and just kind of go in again, kind of do the detail work, dab, dab, dab. Steady hands, although my hands aren't terribly steady at this particular moment in time, probably because I'm on camera. But you're going to want to dab, 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 all over, full coverage, in all the nooks and crannies especially the back of the hand here, kind of go all over. And cover up all that nasty orange rust, sh rust shaded paint that is on those fingers because I don't like it. And now he's got a really cool looking metal claw hand. It's much more Decepticon like in my opinion. Okay, get on the other side. Gotta keep your brush with paint on it, otherwise it starts to get dry. And that's when you start to get clumping and more visible brush strokes. Again, this is all, the more you do it, the better you get at it. I mean, it's like with anything, right? The more you practice, the better you get at it. So that's why I always recommend, and I did in my first video, start with the wheels, because the wheels are super, super easy. They're not 
intimidating to to paint a wheel and they really give you the, the the practice that you need before you start getting into more advanced ones. So there's now his custom painted metallic looking claw, which let's compare it to, you know, I mean, which one would you rather have on your, your bot? And how long did that take me? About 15, 20 seconds. What a difference, right? Hardly anything to it, but makes a huge difference in how it looks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let that dry. But I'm also going to show you quickly while that is drying how I clean my brush. Kind of push it up against the, the bottom of the, the water. Just fan it out. You can kind of see it there. And then if I need to get in there with a finger just to kind of give it a little extra persuasion. And then just dry it off on the paper towel. You can take the paper towel up and kind of like give it a little twirl in there, but you're not going to want to like mash it down because then you end up with a paintbrush that's like all frayed out and terrible. You're really going to want to try and keep that brush in the shape that it's in for best, best results. And it doesn't have to be perfectly dry, um, but you can see now there's no paint coming off. It's nice and clean. That's the nice thing I like about these acrylic paints is they just clean up so, 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 so easy. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to uh, just let this dry. I'm going to finish off the torso off screen. I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you the finished product in just a few quick seconds because of the amazing ability to pause this video and then come back in a couple seconds. So stand by. Three, two, one. Okay, welcome back. That was pretty quick. So now that I've got my torso uh, painted up uh, entirely with that nice metallic silver, uh, I was kind of like, okay, what am I going to do next? So I grabbed my crowbar here and I started looking at it. I'm like, okay, why don't I kind of do like the opposite, you know, like the mirror of this on this guy. So this guy's kind of like, like the silver on the sides and then the black in the middle. Why don't I go silver in the middle and then black on the sides on this guy? And then I can work in a couple of red accents. So that's what I'm going to do. And looking at this torso, you can kind of see that there's these nice big plates um, you know, molded detail plates on the sides that would look really, really good. So I'm going to basically paint from that corner. Here, I'll use the, uh, use this here. So from like here up to there, and then the same thing on the other side, and then maybe I'll do the, um, the lower portion here black as well. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my semi-gloss black so that it's not like a shiny, shiny, but it still looks, uh, looks really cool. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I have waited for this paint to dry entirely, and that is very, very key. You do not want to end up with um, paint blending together while it's still wet on the figure. Um, so be patient. I can't emphasize that enough. You know, repainting a figure is not something that you can do in like 10 minutes, unless you're just doing one piece in one color. If you're doing multiple colors and you're putting a color on top of a thing you've already painted, you've got to wait for it to dry, uh, and that's how you're going to get the best results. Um, because the last thing you want is to accidentally put a finger on a piece of wet paint and then like have a fingerprint that you got to try and clean off. I mean, it just, it's not worth it to rush. So take your time. So using my semi-gloss black here, I'm going to start down here. Let's see if I can get, there we go. I'm going to start here. And I probably should be using a finer brush, but I'm just going to start with this and see how it goes. Not so bad. Sometimes you kind of got to juggle it around in your hands to get the right angle to get in there, but once you do, it makes it pretty easy. And you want to use the panel lines of the robot as your as your guidelines, right? They make really good borders for where you start and stop. So kind of keep that in mind. Slowly but surely get closer and closer to the edges. And don't be too worried about the precision 
while you're putting on your sort of initial coats because there's always the opportunities for touch-ups. In fact, I can't think of a figure that I've ever done where I haven't had to touch up at least one thing, at least once. And that's just the way it goes. All right, so that's kind of one side done. And you can see it's glossy while it is wet, but it will dry with a much more kind of flatter finish to it. So what I'm going to do is very gently, while that is still drying, and this is not something I recommend doing, but just I'm going to just see how this looks. So I'm going to grab one of the arms, the right arm, that I've painted. Oh, that's the wrong one. And I'm going to see how it looks with that. See, that looks really cool. Yeah, I dig it. So, what I'm going to do next, then, is I'm going to paint the other side black, just on that one panel. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Before I do that, I keep saying, I'm going to grab my very precision fine brush here, and I'm going to add a little bit more detail to that black. I'm going to go down a little bit further. I'll show you what I mean by that in a sec here. So, I'm going to go right down there to... Perfect, that looks so much better. There we go. Nice. All right. So, that piece is done. What I will do is I will pause the video again, I will hit the other side, and then I will come back with you when that is dry, and we'll do some red accents, and then we'll pretty much be done this guy. So, three, two, one. Okay, here we go. So, as you can see now, I've got both black sides done. I've got his little, I just did a little accent of black um, on his uh, crotch there, um, and I've snapped on his legs um, just for um, give me a little bit easier way to hold on to it at this point, um, simply because most of the body is done, um, and we're moving on to sort of the final stages, which is I want to throw some red accents on this guy. Now, a couple of things about the red accents. You'll notice that he already has some red accents on his knees, and this isn't going to match. It looks, might, it looks like it might match on camera, but when in close, uh, up close in person, it won't. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this red paint and touch up the red here, as well as these two little panels right there and there on his shoulders, I think are going to look really cool with red accents. So those are the two that I'm going to do. So let's get this red going here, and we'll see what we get. But I'm thinking this is going to be a nice little way to finish him off. Okay, so I'm going to use my medium-sized brush, and I'm going to start. I'm going to start actually on his shoulder. I'll do those first, just to sort of see what I'm working with here. So we get some red, and then very, very gently start throwing the red on the panel. Now, red I find is one of those colors where you're probably going to have to do two coats simply because it doesn't always cover 100%. So I'll probably have to do two coats of red, but let's just see. So there's one done, there's another one. And before anybody chimes in, yes, I know this isn't movie accurate because I'm just kind of picking the pieces that I want to do, but you know what, sometimes that makes it fun and I'm okay with that. Other times I'm a real stickler for movie accuracy, but when it comes to these kinds of things, Sometimes I just like to do my own thing. All right, so I get that little, little piece on there. There we go. So you can kind of see, if I zoom in close, you can kind of see that the metallic gray is peeking through a little bit, which you know what, actually it might, let me just leave it like that because it kind of looks makes it look worn. Um, so if you want a perfectly pristine, you know, bright red color consistent across, you might want to add another coat on there. But I think I'm actually going to leave that the way that it is because it kind of looks like it fits with them. And you know what? That red on his knees is matching better than I thought. So I'm just going to leave that the way that it is. So, oh, that's out of focus. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there basically we have is the very minor, simple paint touch-ups that I wanted to do to this guy. 
So I'm gonna seal up my paint so I don't get it anywhere else. I will clean up my brush shortly after this video because I don't want it to get all gross, but you know what? I'm gonna kind of just reassemble them so you can get a look at what the finished product looks like. Now, does this one go? Yeah, this one goes on this side like that. Folds in, put his arms back together like that, like that. And his head, put his head on gently. Uh, now, you know, I'm just noticing that those are covered up by his dreadlocks, so I'm gonna have to go back in and do a little bit more touch-ups later, but um, Yeah, that didn't work out the way that I wanted it to. However, let's uh Yeah, well, you know what? It is what it is Like I said, you got to sign up sort of play around with it and experiment with it sometimes till you get it just right, but for the most part I really just wanted to get his torso done and his hands done today, so that is a bonus as far as I'm concerned. So we'll get the other arm snapped on. There we go. And now we have a slightly customized Transformers The Last Night Berserker. Right? All right. There we go. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah, I am definitely going to have to do some more touch-up on him, some more paint work on him, but it's the general gist of it. I mean, you can kind of see what I was going for there. Definitely did a good job of cleaning up his torso. I like the black bars coming down on his side. I might actually do some more black in the middle or something here. I'm not really sure, but, uh, you know, let's get creative, and we'll we'll kind of see um, see what we end up with. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, and those are the basics of how I custom paint a transformer. Like I said, you want to do some research ahead of time. What do you want it to look like? You know, what is your reference? What do you think it should look like? And go from there. You know, start small, do some small touch-ups, do some small panels. Um, you know, maybe it's a matter of just cleaning up the, the paint on his fingers and you just want to get that silver instead of orange. You know, that's a good example there. But, I mean, it's one of those things that you have to do it the way that you want to. You know, nobody can kind of say, oh, you have to customize your figure this way. No way, you do it the way you want to, and you make it the way that you want it to look. Um, but yeah, so I hope this video um, has been helpful. I hope it's encouraged you to maybe pick up a paintbrush and, and do some uh, minor touch-ups to one of your figures, or maybe you're getting ambitious and you want to do a whole figure overhaul. Um, you know, just, uh, like I said earlier, take your time, you know, let the paint dry. I know that I kind of rushed through at the end there, but, uh, you know, do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. <laughs> I'm a victim of it sometimes as well, but I always find that I get the best results when I'm patient. I let the paint dry before I do this. So if you've got any comments, uh, questions, uh, you know, you want to you know, drop any ideas or suggestions in the comments section there um, for the other viewers, uh, that would be awesome. Would love to hear back from you. Um, if you've got... Uh, you know, uh, if you'd be willing to throw me a like, a comment, a share, uh, subscribe, any of that stuff would be amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, other than that, that's the basics of custom paint and transformers. And I hope you really enjoyed watching the video. Hope it's given you some uh, some good advice. And uh, I hope to be back at you soon with uh, with more customization tips and more uh, more good content. So um, thanks very much for tuning in, and have an awesome day. Talk to you later.